Hello everyone, thanks for checking out my video. What a crazy and volatile week we had. Tesla reported super poor earnings and yet the share price popped 12% post earnings. The share price then went on to rally further and was up close to 15% in just 3 days. On the other hand, we had Meta beating estimates but the share price plunged 10% post earnings. And then, at one point, we had a mini sell-off in the stock market when US GDP came in lower than expected, as the US economy grew at its slowest pace in nearly two years. On top of that, we also had inflation measure came in hotter than expected. But somehow, the market finished the volatile week on a strong note as big tech Google and Microsoft carried the market. And we saw the S&P 500 and Nasdaq clinch the best week since November last year. Well, well, is it just me or is it getting crazier out there? Let's discuss what to expect next as we enter a new month. And oh, I have included two other MAX7 stocks under the technical analysis segment. So do watch on to find out more. The S&P 500 and Nasdaq recorded their best week in nearly 6 months. The S&P 500 jumped 2.7% to end a 3-week losing streak, while the Nasdaq gained slightly more than 4% for its first positive week in 5. Very quickly, let's break down what happened last week. As mentioned earlier, we had Meta and Tesla falling and jumping more than 10% respectively after they reported their earnings, and that kind of neutralized each other. Then, on Thursday, data from the US shows that its economy was slowing, and coupled this with a very sticky inflation, the hopes that the Federal Reserve would begin cutting interest rates this year have been dampened. In case you're not aware, the PCE price index came in higher than expected in March. Basically, the inflation number, excluding food and energy, rose 2.8% from a year ago. This is hotter than the estimate of 2.7%. And if we were to include food and energy, the story is the same. The number is also higher than expectation at 2.7% versus the estimate of 2.6%. This simply shows how sticky inflation can be at the current level. But mega cap companies Microsoft and Alphabet aka Google came to rescue. Microsoft beat analyst estimates on the top and bottom lines as their cloud computing business displayed solid strength and acceleration, fueled by its services in generative AI. Its cloud computing revenue basically surged by more than 20%. Post earnings, Microsoft's share price rose close to 2% and added about $54 billion to their market value. As for Google, it was even more impressive. Other than better than expected first quarter results, they also announced two other things that got investors really excited about, and they are a $70 billion shares buyback plan, as well as their first ever dividend for shareholders. As a result, Google jumped more than 10% and recorded its best day since July 2015. Not just that, the share price is also hitting a record high, lifting its market value above $2 trillion. All these strong earnings have overshadowed the sticky inflation and slow economic growth narrative, and so the market rallied. Well, I know we just had a huge earnings week with lots of volatility and wild swings. But there's no time for a breather, as the busy earnings season continues this week. Tech giants such as Amazon and Apple will be reporting their results on 30th April and 2nd May respectively after trading hours. Other noteworthy non-tech giants are also set to report their earnings, including Coca-Cola, Mastercard and McDonald's. To add on, given the recent AI and crypto waves, some investors could also be interested in earnings from Supermicro Computer and Coinbase. Apart from companies' earnings, the Federal Reserve may also steal some headlines as they convene on 30th April and 1st May. Specifically, investors would be more interested in the Fed's next interest rate decision, which is due on Wednesday 1st March, as well as what Jerome Powell has to say. Just to share, in recent months, several Federal Reserve officials have signaled that a rate cut will not arrive so soon as inflation readings continue to be sticky and stubborn. 
As a result, the Wall Street has furiously scaled back its expectation for Fed rate cuts this year, from an expectation of uh, six cuts to just one at the moment. Moving over to the technical analysis segment, this week I have added two more Mac 7 stocks and they are Meta and Microsoft, so do watch on if they interest you. Anyway, let's first check out SPY's chart. SPY had a nice little bounce off the 50% Fibonacci retracement level and went above the uptrend channel. That's bullish. Especially, it did a classic textbook retrace, retest and rebound off the uptrend channel. Come this week, watch for 510. This is where the 23.6 Fibonacci level and 50 moving average sit, which forms a double resistance level. If SPY can close above this level and stays above it, then very likely the MACD will have a bullish cross, which also means that SPY could start to test the all-time high at 524. Some catalysts for this week would be Apple and Amazon's earnings, as well as Powell's speech and Fed's interest rate decision. As catalysts can work both ways, so in terms of the downside, if SPY gets below 501, it means the bearish momentum could continue and that the recent bounce is just a dead cat bounce. The reason is because by going below 501, it means SPY has fallen below the 38.2 Fibonacci level and back into the uptrend channel. Remember I said that for a strong trend to carry on, it must not breach 38.2 level for too long. So far, SPY has recovered quite quickly after it breached this level as it bounced off the next Fibonacci level at 495. Therefore, if we were to fall below the 38.2 Fibonacci level again, you got to watch if it can stitch a similar recovery. Otherwise, I would say the recent pullback from the peak has not ended. Next up, let's look at Apple's chart. Big week for Apple as it releases its earnings after losing its position of the most valuable US company to Microsoft. Before I move on, I just wanted to share, by now you may realize that sometimes technical analysis may not be very applicable right before a company's earnings because knee-jerk reactions from the market can overshadow technical analysis. That being said, let's still list down some of the key levels and both bearish and bullish thesis. In terms of the bearish thesis, it's nice to see Apple bouncing off the important support zone of 165 to 167 area, but we are not out of the woods yet. This is one support area that I have been talking about for a while in my videos. So if Apple gives us a stinker, or if investors are unfazed by the Apple story, a fall below this level will simply open the floodgate, at least in my opinion. Can you see the gap between 157 to 158? That area will act like a magnet to pull Apple towards it if investors don't like Apple's earnings and forecasts. In the 150s range, a decent support lies at 155 level, but sometimes market makers may not be so kind to bring the price down to the exact level you want. So if Apple were to get to the gap area, I may start considering picking up some shares already. On the other hand, in terms of the bullish thesis, it's quite evident that Apple has been stuck in this downtrend since it hit its peak of 196 back in December 2023. For Apple to reverse this trend, it has to minimally close above the 38.2 Fibonacci level. This is quite an important level for bulls to take over as you can see, Apple did try to break out of this level twice recently but failed to do so. Third time's a chime? We shall see. I do think it really hinges on its earnings and forecasts. Actually, even above 176, I also think Apple is not out of the woods yet because we still have a big resistance level at 180 to 181, with the 200 moving average sitting right there. This area used to be a solid support area, but has now become a resistance zone. Moving over to Tesla, wow, just how volatile can this stock get? It can plunge 24% in one month and then recover 15% in three days. If you are an option trader, you would love its volatility. If you are a long-term investor of Tesla, you must be able to stomach such volatility. Anyway, similar to Apple, Tesla is stuck in a super long downtrend, which started in July 2023. For Tesla to reverse this trend, it obviously has to break out of this blue dotted downtrend channel. 
But let's zoom in a little bit. There are some obstacles along the way. The first resistance level is the 50 moving average, a level that it hasn't been able to even test it since it fell below the level in January this year. This level is 176. But because Tesla is very volatile, I will give it a range and stretch it to the all-important 61.8 Fibonacci level at 180. If we continue the current upward movement towards this 176 to 180 area, it will bring the RSI to almost an oversold level. From there, I will watch how Tesla react to the resistance zone. And if I were to see some sign of weakness and rejection, I may step in to sell covered calls, which is a bearish move. And oh, don't be surprised if the big institutions brings Tesla up to fulfill the gap at around 184 to 186. So yeah, there you have it, two potential areas of rejection to watch. But of course, if Tesla can overcome both resistance levels, then watch that blue dotted channel line. Above it, it means we can say hello to 200's range again. On the other hand, can I do a quick shout out to the following two viewers please? Thank you for your support and donations. Really appreciate the kind words as well. It does keep me going in terms of providing free weekly content on this platform. Meanwhile, for others who would like to support this channel, you can either buy me a super thanks on YouTube, a cup of coffee on Ko-Fi, or just like, share, subscribe, and comment something below. I would be really grateful for any form of support. Okay, on the other hand, towards the end of last Friday, Tesla has turned from green to red. So investors may want to pay a bit more attention on how the stock moves on Monday. If investors start to think what Elon said were all fluffy stuff, then the post earnings bounce could be a dead cat bounce. The next immediate target for the best would be the gap between 147 and 157. That's a big gap. This is one potential bounce area though, but if it doesn't bounce, then Tesla could slide to a new 52 week low as it will likely hit towards the bottom of the channel line again. And this time round, it's around 135. Tesla must not break below this channel. I repeat, bulls have to defend this area and channel. If not, we are looking at the gap at 120's range and perhaps even the low 100. I already have a lot of Tesla shares, but if Tesla were to fall to low 100, well, I think I wouldn't be able to resist in picking up more shares. Moving over to Google, Google is now in an uncharted territory. What I can see from the Fibonacci extension level is that it's near the critical resistance level at around 174.5. In fact, the stock tested this level last Friday as it hit a height of 174.7 but got rejected and ended the day close to 172. I would think the momentum could continue early this week, which means Google will likely test this resistance level again. Above the 161.8 Fibonacci level, which we can't see on the chart, the next Fibonacci level is around 187. Will Google come to this level in the next two weeks? Honestly, nobody knows. When the stock moves to such untested and uncharted territory, it's all about waiting for the big institutions to take profits. That being said, maybe one can draw some reference to Meta's chart. The last time round when it gapped up post earnings, it basically went further up to create more all-time highs, and then it started to move sideways. This may just happen to Google. In terms of the downside, let's keep it short. The big gap that you see on screen is always yelling to be filled. And personally, I find it quite amazing how the gap sits so nicely between the top and bottom end of this uptrend channel. Even if Google starts to fill this gap, I wouldn't be too worried. It is only when Google starts falling below this green dotted uptrend channel, then we can say there is a reversal in the current bullish trend. In the next few weeks, honestly, I don't see how Google can fall so massively, unless some black swan events happen. Alright, introducing Meta to this week's technical analysis segment. So, as mentioned earlier in the Google segment, Meta has been moving sideways since it had a post earnings gap up in February this year, and the huge gap has been waiting to be filled. And so, it got partly filled last week, with the remaining gap below ranging from 400 to 414. 
I know we had a very small bounce last Friday, but it doesn't mean anything to me. Come this week, let's see if Meta continues to fall. If it does, then naturally the remaining gap could be the best target. This is one area where the stock could potentially bounce, as the gap is also where the 161.8 Fibonacci level sits, at around 403. If we ever get to this area this or next week, I may consider picking up some Meta shares. Not financial advice, okay? And if Meta doesn't bounce from this gap, I really don't see much support all the way to the full Fibonacci retracement level at 373, as this is also where the 200 moving average sits. Alright, in terms of the upside, if we can fill the gap on top between 446 to 484, that's great. But by doing so, Meta is not out of the woods yet. It must not get rejected at the top end of the gap. Or in other words, it needs to close above 483 to 484 level. Then yes, we can say that the drop was just a knee-jerk reaction post earnings. And investors are back sweeping up Meta shares. It will be even more bullish if Meta can get above the 50 moving average at 494. When that happens, I think it will stand a high chance to hit 500 again. Finally, a new stock for this section, Microsoft. Microsoft is quite a good stock for option sellers because it's moving sideways or range bound since January till now. That's a good 4 months of sideways movement ranging from 390 to 430. A closer look at the chart, you will realize that the Fibonacci retracement levels are giving us good indication of Microsoft's movement. First of all, the stock tends to bounce off the 50% Fibonacci level at around 398. It happened 4 times in the last 4 months. And remember, I always share that the 61.8 Fibonacci level is critical. So look at how Microsoft touched this level briefly and bounced back up swiftly. In short, it's quite easy to interpret Microsoft's chart. If Microsoft doesn't get below the 61.8 Fibonacci level at 390, there is nothing for the bulls to be worried about. But if this level gets breached, then I will be on my toes, because I don't see much support below. That's when I think Microsoft may fall towards 370's range, where the next consolidation zone is. Otherwise, Microsoft may just stick around this consolidation area of 390 to 430. That was the reason why I previously sold a cash secure put with a 390 strike price, and the trade is up 40% now. Anyway, if we ever get above 430, then that's a different story because it means Microsoft is finally awakened and breaking out of this consolidation zone or sideways movement. That's very bullish. Alright, moving over to the options trading section. Last Friday, 26 April, I have a cash secure put on Tesla that expired. The strike price was 145 and the contract was sold on 21st March. The reason why I opened the trade at that point was because MACD had a bullish cross. And the last 4-5 to five times when this happened, Tesla had a decent bounce. But I did also caution that this was a risky trade as I didn't wait for a further confirmation of bullish signals. For more information about my thought process behind this trade, please check out the link above. Well, what happened next was that the MACD bullish cross did turn out according to plan as Tesla bounced up to as high as 184. But unfortunately, it didn't last, and Tesla went on a steep downtrend, falling from 184 to about 139. That was a good 24% drop in less than a month. So that was the reason why I cautioned that it was a risky trade because at one point my trade was down 312%. Okay, I got to be very honest with the viewers who are watching this video. I must say I got lucky. Yes, I repeat, I basically got a little lucky because Tesla reported a really poor earnings, but I was saved by Elon Musk and his growth story. Somehow, the market liked what Elon Musk has shared and Tesla rallied more than 15% post earnings. As a result, my trade swung from a negative 312% to a positive 100%, and that's a wild 400% swing. I mean, I could argue that Tesla has already reached the bottom of this downtrend channel line, it was very oversold and was due for a bounce, and how my technical analysis is playing out. 
Yes, I could say all those, but I don't want to lie. I have to admit that there was a bit of luck element here. Anyway, as Tesla didn't close below my 145 strike price last Friday, the contract expired worthless and I got to keep the full premium of about 200 bucks without having to close my position. Alright, some end thoughts from me. Last week, it appears that the tech-driven rally has been revived as robust earnings and forecasts from Alphabet and Microsoft powered a winning week. In the process, the market has ignored a sticky inflation reading and a slowing US economy. But how long can this last? Okay, first and foremost, the impressive results from the two magnificent seven companies have shown how growing demand for AI can boost a company's revenue by increasing efficiency and perhaps even cutting some costs and expenses. And do you remember in my last video, I talked about how high interest rate environment could be a new norm. So the solid earnings from these tech giants have basically given investors the confidence that AI boom can help these companies in continuing their growth in a high interest rate environment. To put it simply, investors are cheering that the talks about AI boom and demand are being converted to solid results and numbers, and not just pure speculations. This is probably why the stock market brushed aside a stubborn inflation reading last week. As much as I am happy that my portfolio is gaining from the recent rally as I hold shares of Microsoft, Google and Tesla, I would like to caution myself and maybe viewers out there that all these 10% pops are not sustainable. They are just knee-jerk reactions where investors scramble to buy or sell shares after they digested the earnings results. Come May, as we enter the new month, earnings season is going to fade off. The headlines will be dominated by the macro factors again, mainly inflation and interest rates. Attention will be shifted back to Fed's interest rate policy. The recent mixed macro data has reunited some fears over a potential soft landing scenario. I mean, with inflation up, economic growth down, and two-year treasury yields hitting 5% again, the music in the stock market may be fading. In case you are not aware, slowing economic growth combined with rising inflation is known as stagflation. It is a scenario that many are likely not prepared for. In a stagflationary environment, prices of your day-to-day -day goods such as food and other necessities continue to rise, while your spending power decreases. It basically spells bad news. Okay, in case you get a wrong message, I'm not here to spread fear. The point here is, as we enter the new month, and as earning seasons come to an end towards the end of May, pay some attention to the various economic data that will be released in the month ahead. The stock market may recalibrate itself and there may be more pullbacks after the earnings euphoria ends. Just be mentally prepared so that you won't get caught off guard. Again, like I always said, build your watch list and set some target prices. Any form of pullbacks is an opportunity for me and perhaps you to pick up shares of good companies at discounted prices. And that's what I did as I stepped in for Apple and Microsoft recently when they pulled back. Alright, that's about it. Do help me grow this channel by tapping on the like and subscribe buttons before you exit. Thank you very much.